tonight. Federal government's health care plan. We're announcing that the federal government will be providing $198 billion. High expectations, low funds. Will the premiers be able to negotiate a desired deal? And earthquakes death toll rises to more than 11,000 as rescuers scramble to find signs of life in fallen debris. Amidst the pain and loss, Charlie Hebdo's provocative cartoon causes outrage on social media. Can a mentally ill Canadian teenager incarcerated in the US be brought back to Canada? Uh, my son, Abdurrahman al Bahnasawi, unfortunately, he's, he's suffering now under a harsh, inhuman prison in the US. We talked to his parents about their campaign, Bring Abdul Home. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I am Catherine Bullock. The federal government has unveiled its health care plan, offering the provinces and territories funding worth $196 billion over the course of the next 10 years. Out of this fund, $46.2 billion in new money is offered to the premiers. Premiers are calling the deal disappointing. They say the money offered is less than what they were seeking, especially for the first year. After unveiling the plan, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau told reporters further negotiations will be based on what the government has put on the table. The premiers will meet before their next Council of the Federation conference to discuss what their responses will be. Advocates want the federal government to fulfill its promise to develop a black Canadian justice strategy. In the last election campaign, the Liberal government committed to creating a strategy to address black racism in the Canadian criminal justice system. In the past, the United Nations pointed to racial profiling in Canada's law enforcement and justice systems. According to the Black Legal Action Centre, black Canadians are more likely to be stopped, charged and arrested by police, often leading to serious injuries. Black Canadians are overrepresented in the prisons. Justice Minister David Lometti's office says they are working with the black community in this regard and will provide further updates soon. The death toll from a massive earthquake that struck Turkey and Syria has risen above 11,000 as rescuers race to save survivors trapped under debris in the harsh winter. Officials say 8,074 people have died in Turkey and more than 2,600 in Syria. Nearly 55,000 people are injured in both countries. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has promised to rebuild the region within a year during a visit to the affected areas. Syria has made an official plea to the EU for help. In response, the European Commission is encouraging member countries to help while ensuring the aid is not diverted by the sanctioned Syrian government. French magazine Charlie Hebdo has called outrage on social media with a cartoon it published mocking Turkey after the country was hit by two recent deadly earthquakes. The cartoon, posted on Twitter under the heading Cartoon of the Day, shows buildings near collapse and lying in rubble, a flipped over car and piles of debris in the quake's aftermath. Earthquake in Turkey is written above the cartoon and the words no need to even send tanks appear at the bottom. People voice frustration and anger over Charlie Hebdo for publishing the cartoon, even as the frantic search and rescue efforts continue for survivors of the deadly disaster. Charlie Hebdo magazine is notorious for its cartoons insulting the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abdurrahman Abanasari was 17 when he was allegedly entrapped by an undercover FBI agent with RCMP assistance in a plot to attack New York City. He had struggled with addiction and bipolar disorder for years. He pled guilty in 2016 and is serving a 40-year sentence in a U.S. maximum security prison in Colorado. His parents, who visit him twice a month, are calling on the Canadian government to bring him back home to serve his sentence in Canada. 
to learn more, we are joined by Dr. Khadija Metwali and Brother Osama Albanasawi. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for hosting us. It's our pleasure. I know this is hard for you as the parents of a child going through this ordeal. Help us help the viewers understand. Dr. Khadija, tell us what it's like for your son in jail right now. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kathy, for hosting us in, in that uh, very important channel for all everyone, of the Canadian or Muslims. And my human, uh, the human rights story of my son is very important for everyone. Mm. And it, the, to protect our son, our son is about to protect all our kids and our kids' future. Mm. Uh, my son Abdurrahman al Bahnasawi, unfortunately, he's, he's suffering now under a harsh, inhuman prison in the US. Mm. And he's serving as a mentally ill to serving 40 years in the US prison in this very inhuman, harsh mm. environment is, is, is really um, very hard. And uh, we, we really don't know if he can survive this. Brother Osama. Tell us, uh, uh, your, your wife is using the word inhumane. Can you just explain that? Like, what's inhumane about it? Yeah, so, so Abdurrahman, he has a bipolar disorder since his childhood. Mm -hmm. So the medication is very important to us as those, in, as those bipolar disorder have two, two sides, either uh, mania or depression. Mm. So and they, he should take two medicine, uh, one to make him happy and one to make him comfortable with sleep because mm. those bipolar they cannot sleep at night at all. Mm. So Abdurrahman is not taking that medication. So um, so the depression is so high for him. Plus the solitary confinement. So he's in shoe all the time, 24 by 7, without any medication. Mm. So this cannot lead him to suicide. And he tried to suicide four times before. Uh, no, I'm very sorry to hear that. I'm, I'm very, very sorry to hear that. Dr. Khadija, tell us what it was like uh, uh, trying to raise a son with this uh, bipolar disorder. It's, it's, it's you know, uh, unfortunately, while he's in solitary confinement most of the time in U.S. prison, mm -hmm. that led to, uh, like, um, a damage in his brain. He started to hear voices which are not there. He started to have a lot of hallucinations. And unfortunately, this ended up with the punishment from the prison because he's a not US citizen. So he doesn't have the proper medication as it should be given to him. So let so, me clarify that. Let me clarify. Because he's not a US citizen, he's not allowed to get medication, brother. Or something. He's not allowed to, to get the proper medication as the US citizen or to be in the uh, mentally health centers as the other US citizens. Yeah, and so, this, so, is, this is in the official papers in the court. And yeah. uh, uh, Anna, let's hear let's hear your point of view. Yeah, so so during the court, uh, Sister uh, Kath, Dr. Kathy, the, our lawyers and the psychiatrist appointed it to the judge that Abdurrahman is not a U.S. citizen, so he is not eligible to go to a mental health facility attached to the prison. Because so so this is why Canada is is more suitable for him because Canadian prison is more advanced and he can get the proper medication. I, 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 that is inhumane, not giving somebody meds that they need. I want to ask you one more question, and then we'll talk about your campaign. Uh, why is he in solitary confinement so often, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, we have a court recommendations that Abdurrahman at least be on the minimum of a mental health facility, but unfortunately they moved Abdurrahman from prison to another, which are not mentally health care prison. Mm -hmm. And that led to Abdurrahman to attempted suicide many times, and they put him in a solitary confinement, adding to the tortures happened to Abdurrahman to put him in cages, like cold cages, torture for him for his hallucination or uncontrolled actions, mm -hmm. and that ended up to be an ADX, the worst prison in the world. The prisoners uh, cut off from the other world and they are alone like uh, solitary confinement for 24 by 7 and which, this is, which is a form of this is written and it's condemned internationally yes human beings need social interaction so i think we have a clearer idea about why you've initiated this bring up to home campaign uh brother osama tell us uh, when you launched the campaign and how it's going 
Yeah, actually, we get a support from uh, the the imams, the, the imams, uh, and also from the NCCM, and we actually uh, the host the NCCM hosted up during uh, during uh, the RIS 2022, mm -hmm. and they speak about Abdurrahman case in the stage, and uh, we are doing very well. We have a card which we ask the public to sign to the Canadian government to bring Abdul home. Um, and we have a video channel, we have a, a petition which uh, people can sign called Bring Abdul Home. Uh, we have a website called Bring Abdul Home, so everyone can visit those and they can, um, they can help us. We really appreciate if uh, people can help us in this campaign. Dr. Khadija, do you get anyone saying, well, he was convicted of a terror plot, I don't think he should come home? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? When, when you make an appeal to, to uh, listeners or, or community members to say, please, our son is suffering in the prison, please bring him back to Canada, does anyone say, well, he was part of a terror plot, we shouldn't bring him back? Are you getting that kind of response? Uh, we, we didn't get the, the response that should be for this very, yani, uh, very human right case like Abdul Rahman. We're still waiting, waiting. Uh, we even submitted a complaint to the National uh, Security Review Agency about what had to happen from the RCMP and the FBI. They knew about the mental illness of Abdurrahman. Nobody warned us or helped us. So we, we are waiting, Dr. Kati, and we use all the facility. Many, many media talk about Abdurrahman's story, and we, all what we do now is waiting, giving the cars, giving the signatures. We have, um, uh, we have a campaign of uh, like, uh, like more than 10,000 signatures from the U.S. and Canadian citizens. Mm -hmm. And we are waiting, Dr. Cathy. We ask all the MPs, Trudeau, mm -hmm. uh, our Prime Minister, please intervene. Intervene before it's too late for this mentally ill son to lose his life. And Brother Osama, what, what's, what's the Prime Minister telling you, all the agencies that you've contacted? What are you hearing back? Um, actually, uh, we didn't hear back uh, from them. We have a petition which is signed by 11,000 people. Um, we have we contacted our MPs here in the law in the area, and they said we are doing our best to bring him back. But they are very slow. The process is very slow, uh, so we need to accelerate that. And uh, we're, we're out of time, I'm afraid. Uh, this is a heart wrenching story. If someone wants to sign the petition, where will they go to do that, Dr. Khadija? Um, I I ask everyone, every member in the parliament is not only the, our prime minister, but our prime minister is the head of everyone. But mm -hmm. I, I please everyone to intervene, to help us, to help this Canadian citizen who has a mentally ill, who is in a solitary confinement for 24 by 7 in mm -hmm. US without any proper medication. Can you please help us before it's too late? Yeah, we have a website called bringabdulhome.ca and we have a petition called Bring Abdul Home. We have a YouTube channel, we have a, a Facebook account. All of those are mentioned under Bring Abdul Home. We have a Twitter account, so anyone can go, he can uh, sign the petition, he can communicate with us if he needs to help. And the, uh, we are we argue people to contact their MPs and speak about Abdurrahman case. Well, we're out of time. We wish you, we, we pray for Abdurrahman's safety and that he comes back home to safety and that people support you. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, please share, like, and subscribe. Stay safe and God bless.